you guys welcome to a new weekly vlog i have been reading the library of the unwritten by aj hackwith this is about this library in hell which that should already make you want to read it basically this library is made up of these books that are unwritten and so either the author is still alive or they're dead basically just unfinished books and sometimes the characters in these books will escape and try to look for their authors and so our librarian who is our main character she has to go and retrieve the characters and put them back in their books repair books etc etc so it's basically sorcery of thorns meets the good place meets supernatural meets absolute perfection this is so amazing <sighs> I am in awe about how incredible this book is and I am only 150 pages into this. I knew this was going to be a five star page one. I don't know how I knew that. The writing style in this, the world building, the lore in this, there's so much biblical lore obviously because it's the library of hell and kind of the main plot of this is that they are trying to look for the devil's bible which they haven't really gotten into what that is like what it does and all of those things but basically they're in a race against the angels of heaven because they are also looking for this book so it is so good they're there's so much, again, like I said, world building in this. There's so much that goes into how this library operates, what these stories do, and the power of them. Another part is that our librarian's apprentice is a muse who basically got punished to work at the Library of Unwritten Works because she wanted to take inspiration for herself to create her own stories. So there's the muses, there's demons, there's angels, there's Valhalla in this, like it's so crazy because each of the mythological realms of the underworld has their own library and we got to travel to Valhalla which is where all of the untold acts of heroism go and it's I had such high expectations for this book because the synopsis is absolutely perfect for me, but I thought there was no way that this book was going to live up to the expectations that I had in my mind, and there was no way this book was going to be as good as the synopsis was, but oh my god, it is that and more. I cannot hype this enough, and I haven't even finished it yet, but the writing style in this is so good. If you love Shauna McGuire, and she's actually the one who blurbed this. Well, she there's a bunch of authors that blurbed this. But if you love Shauna McGuire, you need to buy this immediately. Because it's very similar writing style. And it has that intricacy and just crazy way of thinking and way of building a world and a story and mythos it's i am just so impressed by this it's so funny it's so captivating i cannot put this book down like it took me it took so much effort in me to just put it down to film this clip because i am completely and utterly in love with this book i know it's really really early and I shouldn't jump the gun, but I anticipate this definitely being on my top books of the year list. I can't imagine anything happening in here where that changes because this is incredible. <laughs> strange how in every single media revolving around biblical lore, stories, anything like that set in the modern day, the Christian God is always lost, abandoned, just checked out, and just not present. I just think that's kind of interesting. 
I don't know what that says. I'm sh I, my atheist ass isn't gonna tell you what that says, but it's interesting. Hello, it's time for another outfit of the day. So I bought these overalls at Goodwill. It's like an overall dress kind of thing at Goodwill the other day, and I wasn't completely sure I was gonna be able to make it work, but they were on sale, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get them and see what I can do. And I put them over this little peasant medieval top thing, and I think this outfit is so cute. I really am digging it. And the pockets, like, do you see how deep those goes? That's what she said. And there's a little front pocket too. Mm. It's, it's utilitarian, and it's 1870s meets 1970s. I live, and I'm obsessed, so. Now you guys can be too. Hello, you guys. So, last night, I finished Library of the Unwritten, and I'm calling it now. This is definitely going to be on my best of 2020 list, if not at the number one spot. Definitely top three. I absolutely adored everything about this, and... I feel so bad because I don't think I can articulate how good this is because a lot about how amazing this is has to do with the writing as well as just the setting. The lore in here is so rich, like why these books are unwritten, what does that mean to be an unwritten book, what does it mean for the characters, what does it mean for humanity, how are other places of the underworld and other beliefs featured in this book and how are their hierarchies, how do they handle it. We travel through multiple different realms in this book. We go to Valhalla, we go to hell, we go to heaven, we go to a Greek-esque underworld, like the labyrinth kind of thing. We go through an Egyptian-esque kind of underworld. There's a lot of places we travel to and there's a lot of history and lore and mythology and it's so incredible, and even if you don't like all of that, there's so much discourse about creativity, inspiration, books. It's so good. If you enjoy any of those things, if you enjoy mythology, lore, found families, snarky characters, diverse characters, all of that is wrapped up in a package that has a writing comparable to Shauna McGuire. So if you're a huge Shauna McGuire fan, you are absolutely going to love this. Very comparable. The writing is just stunning. Every single chapter in here starts with a chronicle from a previous librarian of hell, and those are so interesting. If you like Scythe or Thunderhead, very similar concept. It's- this is just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so fun. It's so- amazing. I loved this so much and I truly did not think that the potential was going to be met, let alone exceed the potential. This is incredible. You need to get your hands on it. That's all I can say about it. Just read it and you'll be the judge of if this is as perfect as it is because I promise you that it is. We are gonna go thrifting because that's my only personality trait and I'm um, gonna see maybe i'll take maybe i'll film some clips maybe i won't because sometimes i forget to do so <laughs> Hello you guys. So it's been a couple hours since I last checked in, but I got a couple things when I went to the thrift store. The first thing you guys may judge me for because very, very much grandma aesthetic. Found these pillows! Had to get them because the print is super cute. This one is fine. It's just like flowers. But this one is the one that I'm going to put on this chair right here because I've been looking for a throw pillow that I could put on my chair. And this one I saw it has angel babies on it, which if you don't know, that is my peak aesthetic. I have a lot of angel babies throughout my room, which you guys will see once I do a room tour, but I don't know when that's going to happen because that requires me to deep clean my room and I don't like doing that. My taste truly matches up perfectly with a six-year-old woman and I know what I like and that's what I like. I love gold. I love gaudiness. I love angel babies. I love anything resembling Christian iconography. I've said it before, I will constantly appropriate Catholicism and that's just who I am as a human being. And I did find a book. I got The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. 
I don't know too much about this, but I know that it is a very popular middle grade book series. I don't even know if it's a series or not. And I believe it is following this girl who gets abandoned in the forest for some reasons because apparently these kids, some kids, all kids, all girls, I don't know the specificities, they get sacrificed to this witch that is supposed to be this like big bad person that like eats children or something. I mean, I'm not gonna judge your lifestyle. And it turns out that this witch isn't bad and it's just magical things. I don't know if this is full on fantasy. I don't know if it's fabulism. I don't know any of that. Not a great synopsis, but the cover is so cute. Yeah, let's see what it looks like under the dress jacket because I didn't see. Oh my gosh! It is so cute! It has the embossing of the title and then it's oh we love a foiled spine this is so cute you know what i keep saying i'm a paperback stand but i still love hardcovers so i guess it's good that i thrift all the time so i don't really have a say in what is what but very excited to have this i do have some reading things to update you guys on so i have been listening to two books the first one is Girl Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa, don't know, but it'll be right here. This is a Snow White retelling, and we are following our Snow White character as well as our Evil Queen character. And there are some mysterious or unique circumstances about both of their birth and their functions. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but I don't want to say exactly what it is. All I'm going to say is the title. But this one is boring me. And it's not bad in any sense of the word. Like, the writing is fine. The plot, it's fine. I'm just not. It's just boring to me. And I was under the impression that this was a female-female romance retelling, and apparently we don't get the sapphic vibes until, like, the very, very end, and it's, like, hinted at. If I'm not in it for the gaze, and I'm not in it for the plot, then what is the point of me being in it for? So, probably going to DNF this. And then I was like, okay, so one sapphic read didn't work out, let's try another one. So then my hold came in for Crier's War by Nina Varela, and this one, gonna tell you guys right now, I had zero interest in this book. I, I'm not a dystopian, sci-fi, friggin' post-apocalyptic automatron. I just, none of those things are intriguing to me whatsoever. But I wanted to support, you know, sapphic books because that's important and we need more of those, so I wanted to support it. But I'm also bored and obviously because just because a book is sapphic doesn't mean that i'm gonna like it because i don't like anything else about it so i don't think i'm going to dnf it quite yet i'm 30 percent into it and it's just again it's just fine the writing is fine the plot is just eh, i'm just not I'm not into it. I'm not into the human versus automatron discourse. I just don't care. Uh, I'm over the whole subjugating of other people. I just, we get enough of that in the real world. And it's just, I'm just not, I just, I'm not, no, I'm not a fan. Spoken, you know, as the privileged white girl. I don't care about discrimination. It's, it's not the trope for me. It's not the wave. So I'm going to keep listening to it at least until, like, once we get into the romance part, like the actual romance aspect, I at least want to wait until then. And then if I'm still not invested in the book, I'll DNF it. But I still want to give Crier's War a chance. I need to pick up a physical book and I have a shit ton of library books. I'm just going to see what happens and I'll update you guys whenever I end up choosing what I'm going to read.
hello you guys so i look a little crazy right now just ignore her so i have been listening to crier's war by nina varela and i'm liking it a little bit now because there is that tension and that romance developing between Ayla and Cryer who are our two main characters. Ayla is our human character who is the endangered servant, not endangered but just lower class, the race that is being subjugated by Cryer's people who are the automatons and she is the princess and Ayla ends up being the head servant for Cryer after saving Cryer's life, and there's a whole bunch of, you know, rebellion and those typical dystopian plot lines. I'm still just, I'm bored, I am. I really do like the dynamic between Cryer and Ayla. Ayla is a very quiet, broody kind of type, very angry, very built up resentment, all of those things, and Cryer is our optimist, curious, uplifting kind of character, so I like the dynamics, and it's very gay. I really, really like that our author does not shy away from depicting sexual tension. Desires are very much shown that these they have them, especially Cryer, like she's trying to come to terms with why she has these feelings, especially because she's an automaton and I guess they don't really have those feelings. I don't know. So I really, really like that because in other sapphic books that I've read, they've really been super wholesome and just, they just, oh my god, they just love each other so much and they cuddle and they hold hands and they just, oh my god, their hearts are so warm for each other. And it's like, yeah, but other parts are probably supposed to be warm for each other as well. So I'm glad that the author doesn't shy away from actually showing desire as well as other feelings that comes with liking somebody. But I just, I don't care about the story, I don't care about the plot, I don't care about the world, and I knew that going in to this book that it wasn't going to be for me, but again, I just wanted to give it a shot. I'm giving it a shot, I'm going to finish it. I have about four hours left, so I will definitely be getting it done today. Actually, I am staying up very late, and I don't know how when I'm going to sleep, how I'm going to sleep, but long story short, me, my boyfriend Sal, my dad, and my uncle are all driving to Tijuana, Mexico tonight at like 3 a.m. So I'm staying up until then and then probably sleeping in the car. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I have a lot of audiobooks up my sleeve because I personally can't read in the car because I get motion sickness. It really sucks, especially when we're going to be in the car for like eight to nine hours and I'm just praying that the grapevine which is the mountain passing I don't exactly know what the grapevine is it's the grapevine I'm praying that it doesn't get closed because it's been closed a lot during this winter because of the snow and if we get stuck on the grapevine I'm going to scream and probably die I don't want that for me I don't I don't want it at all like California traffic is already bad enough without that catastrophe so I'm hoping and praying that doesn't happen but yeah it's going to be really fun I'm obviously going to vlog all of it so enjoy the future Mexico content I have never been to Mexico I'm on the only time I've been out of the country is Canada which we did last summer so this is going to be my first time in Mexico very very excited to eat and that's pretty much all we're going to do and that's all I need to do so I'm ready to embrace the culture the food, the atmosphere. I'm ready. I'm ready to drink some tequila with my tacos because I am of age in Mexico, which is fantastic. I'm just gonna have a great time. Hello, you guys. We are right at the border of Mexico in San Diego. Well, I'm very tired, but I did finish Cryer's War, and I'm gonna give it three out of five stars. Nothing changed from any of my previous thought. It just wasn't my thing, and I only read it for the gays, and I read it, and that's fine. There's nothing else really to say about it, because I didn't enjoy the plot or the world or anything like that. Like I've said previously, I just enjoyed, like, Cryer and Ayla, so it is a three star.
guys, I'm back home from Tijuana, as you can see, and it was a fantastic time, as you guys would have seen all of that, but now I am going to need to close off this vlog because I'm sure it's going to be long enough. This week, I managed to read two books, the first being Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith, which I gave five out of five stars, and Crier's War by Nina Varela, which I gave three out of five stars. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and if you didn't, there's always next week. Bye!